Hello guys and welcome to your 8th Blitz 3 tutorial in which we are going to be going over refined collisions. So as you can see here I have left all the code from the previous tutorial and if we actually run this program we're going to see what our not refined collisions look like. Uh, so clearly we are, we're having some space here between the bottle and the, and the cube on the right and a lot of space on the top. So this is, this is not how a collision should look like. You guys know it, I know it. So how do we actually improve them? Well, we do that in this, uh, in, this, in this segment of code here by simply correcting these last two arguments of the collisions uh, command. So uh, it might sound simple, but it's actually not. <laughs> um, well, let's go over this last argument here uh, first. So we had it originally set to 2, which means we have a full sliding... And by the way, this argument, uh, it simply represents how our our moving object responds when it collides with our static object. By the way, this is the moving object, and this is the, the object that doesn't move, and this object collides with that object, yes. The bottle collides with the cube, and how does it respond? Well, this 2 means that it responds with a full sliding collision, meaning we could slide, slide all around this cube, just like so. So sliding works very nice, nicely and easily. But besides that too, this also has two different values. It has a one, uh, which means it wa we want the bottle to stop when we collide with the cube. And let's just go ahead and demonstrate that quickly. So as you can see, I cannot uh, slide down this cube with this setting. I, I just move to the right, and if I hold the left and down arrow keys, I can't move at all. So it just automatically stops me when I try to do many things at once while colliding with this bottle, so it kind of just simulates extremely heavy friction between uh, these two objects. Alright, so one completely stops, two is full sliding, and three is a vertical sliding, which pretty much means that it doesn't let you slide down slopes, but it does let you slide vertically. Alright, so there's, there's pretty much, there's, you know, it kind of stops me a lot because this is, there's a lot of slopes here. However, this is pretty pretty straight, pretty vertical, so it lets me slide along it. Yes, yes, it does. All right. So now that we've gotten those three easy types out of the way, let's get to the serious stuff, which is this for this argument right here. And this argument, and by the way, I'm just going to preset it to two full sliding collision. I like that the most because I think it gives me the most flexibility uh, while moving around the object. Now you know you can choose choose what you prefer, but I prefer the, the full sliding. All right. So what does this argument here do? Well, this argument, uh, surprise, surprise, also has three different values, except the first one would actually be for, uh, it, the, except this argument actually defines uh, the, uh, the type of a collision and the type, uh, the shape of the two objects that are present in this collision. So uh, one would be an ellipsoid to ellipsoid collision, two would be an ellipsoid to polygon collision, and three would be an ellipsoid to box collision. Now in case you guys don't know what an ellipsoid is, I've actually saved up a very nice image right here that uh, uh, to show you guys what an ellipsoid is. And as you can see, it's pretty much just a uh, ellipse that uh, expands into 3D space. And this can be stretched and scaled to fit over uh, pretty much any object, which is why it's so widely used in 3D programming and specifically game programming. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go over each one of these types comprehensively. So originally we had uh, it set to 2, right? Well, 2 is an ellipsoid to polygon collision. And by the way, guys, for an ellipsoid, or in this case our bottle axis and ellipsoid, we always have to specify an entity radius command uh, for that, you know, uh, for that collision field to take to appear. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, it, and for our, for our polygon, this this too, it's an ellipsoid to a polygon collision, and we don't need to specify anything for our polygon. So, we, like, not, and not anything like the entity radius command. We can just leave it as it is, like we just did in the last tutorial, and we're just going to get a polygonal type uh, collision for our cube, as you can see. Uh, poly polygon uh, version of our cube. We collide with that. All right. So, what other setting do we have? Well, yes. Once again, I've mentioned the first setting, which is an ellipsoid to an ellipsoid collision. And since our cube is now an ellipsoid, uh, we need to specify the entity radius for our cube. And let's spell it correctly. And uh, so, what what and what radius do we want to have? Well, let's just have an entity radius of one for our cube. Uh, and let's see how these collisions work out for our cube yes clearly as you can see it's a lot more round right now so the the cube's hitbox 
uh, is a lot more rounds. And by the way, that's what it's called. It's either collision field or hitbox. That's what we actually collide with uh, when we move in. All right. So now that we've covered the first one and the second one, what is the third one? Well, the third one is probably the most important for our current case because it because it deals with uh, an ellipsoid to a box collision. Yes, that is very important indeed because our cube is a box. And for this collision, we need to define, once again, the entity radius for our bottle because it acts as the ellipsoid. And we need to define an entity box uh, uh, for our cube and what this is is it pretty much just defines a uh, a hitbox or a collision field for our cube and uh, first we need to specify the x y and z coordinates of the center of our cube I'm just gonna put that negative one uh, comma negative one comma negative one because that's where it's originally instantiated and then the width the height and the depth of our cube I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slam down ones for that because I'm I'm not all that creative with those values but um, Clearly, we're going to need to fine-tune this, and you'll see how we'll do the fine-tuning uh, in just a second. So as you can see, I've just uh, I've just specified the entity box collision, and it's definitely not very accurate because we can move through the cube, and we're only colliding with one part of the cube here. So uh, we definitely need to improve this. And how do we improve it, you might ask? Well, we just need to fine-tune. So uh, we went, we just, we're probably just going to expand it uh, slightly on the make make its make its height greater and also make its width greater uh, and see how that works out for us alright so now uh, better better definitely but uh, now it's too much it's too tall and it's too wide <laughs> so what we're actually gonna do is uh, we're gonna move it down this we're moving this uh, hitbox down this collision field down uh, simply uh, let's go ahead and make it move it down to you un uh, one unit on the on the y-axis and just a bit on the x-axis translate that a bit to the left let's see what we get now alright I'm I'm loving the collisions on the left that's really good yeah collisions on the top could use some work and collisions on the left uh, collisions on the right because yeah, right and left collisions are really good and bottom and top need some work alright so what we're what are we gonna do now and we're simply just gonna buff this up a bit on the uh, height parameter and now uh, let's go ahead and see how that works and now it's slightly it's just a little bit too much uh, we're just gonna move it down I know exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna move that uh, collision field down a bit uh, y-axis about 2.3 I think let's run that again and see how this works uh, alright really nice really nice on bottom and I, I love it on the top actually it's, it looks good looks good I, I all right so uh, yeah I think that's pretty much it guys for this tutorial we're getting some really fine-tuned collisions and always remember there's always a distinction uh, in programming between what we actually see and what we actually collide with and so when we when we set the entity box um, for our cube we actually set this collision field for it because what we actually see on the screen is called its mesh but what we actually collide with is called its either its hitbox or its um, or its collision field. So uh, yes, just don't forget that. And also remember the, th the three different types for an ellipsoid to an ellipsoid. We need to specify entity radiuses for both of them. For an ellipsoid to polygon, we only need to specify entity radius for one. For uh, uh, three, we need to specify entity radius for one and an entity hitbox for the other one. The ellipsoid to box collisions and this is a stop stopping collision, full sliding collision, and a vertical sliding collision. All right, <laughs> that was a pretty fast run through right there, but uh, nonetheless, thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial. Uh, please like the video if you found some of this stuff useful. Uh, yes, I know, I need to put a shameless plug into that, uh, but you know, nonetheless, thank you guys very much, and peace.